Today we're going to talk about bug out bags. On the surface, this sounds like a lot of fun. We get to play with cool gear and imagine ourselves in challenging adventures where we can prove our worth. But there's a very serious side to all of this. If you are bugging out for real, it means that forces greater than yourself are coming to deprive you of your life, liberty, and property. I'm reminded of the tragic story of an old-style Russian family that back in the 1930s was fleeing the Red Terror, and they kept moving further away from it and further away from it. Finally, they found themselves in a situation where they literally had to flee immediately for their lives. They grabbed whatever they could and basically just hightailed it into the Siberian forest. And the, the wild part about this story, and I, I recommend you guys look it up, it's, it's really an amazing tale. They, for the next 40 years, remained isolated from the rest of Soviet society. They were hiding out in the woods all this time. And it wasn't until the early 70s that a group of Soviet geologists happened to just see them by helicopter and wonder what these people are doing out in the middle of nowhere. Well, they made contact with them and um, basically these people survived, half starved, but they managed to uh, survive. The point of this story is that if you believe bad stuff is going to happen, you can never really be too prepared. If that Russian family had the prior knowledge how bad things were going to get, and in their defense, they and, and other Russians probably really had no idea how bad things were going to get. Um, they just sort of reacted as things were going along. But if they had that foresight, if they saw the, the point where things were going to get to, they could have clearly prepared it a lot better. They could have loaded up an ox cart with everything they'd need for the next 40 years to hide out in the woods. Or if really came down to it, they may have decided just to get out of Dodge, just to uh, leave while they were still able to leave the country and, and find some safer ground, some uh, safer, higher ground where they can stay. Whatever you're bugging out for, hopefully it's just temporary. Hopefully you can just uh, take off for a couple days, maybe a couple weeks at the most, and then come back home, return to normal, and live happily ever after. Or it might be a situation where you're really going to go for the long haul in a moving truck. Whatever the case is, whether you're traveling light or whether you're traveling heavy and bringing everything in the kitchen sink, you're always going to want to have, prepared well in advance, your own personal pack, the bug out bag. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. So let's check out all the fun stuff we can put in our bug out bag. Probably the most important part of the bug out bag is the bag itself. I don't think it really matters a whole lot what bag you get. Gosh, there's a million brands out there. I happen to use this uh, three-day U.S. military uh, assault pack. That's what they call it. Just because I got a good deal on it. It's a really handy little pack. has a lot of pockets. It's um, really well built. A little bit heavy, but, you know, it's not going to tear. It's good quality. Whatever you do, I'd recommend getting a smaller pack than a bigger pack. I remember I went on a trip to Scandinavia some decades ago and I had this huge backpack with me and I stuffed it with all kinds of stuff and I was going to be there for a month and that pack got ditched at the train station in a locker within the first couple days and basically for the next month what I used was this little uh, bag right here. I kept a loaf of bread in it, a jar of Nutella, a bottle of water, and a raincoat and it served me well. You don't want to be lugging a bunch of heavy stuff. If you're used to that and you can do that, that's, that's great. Me personally, I like to travel lighter. Um, so what you're seeing in front of you here is everything I have in that pack at any given time. It's always stuffed with that. It looks like a lot of stuff, but believe it or not, this all comes in with the pack at right at about 20 pounds. So we can start out with um, what I consider the less uh, used stuff, but still necessary stuff and good stuff to have along. I've got my medical kit here, some rubber gloves, little moleskin kit, another medic kit. Um, it's not a bad idea to have some sort of entertainment like a deck of cards. Uh, I have this little pocket reference manual, which is handy material and it's also pretty fun to read. Uh, here's a waterproof notepad with a pen. There's some little uh, cards, navigation cards and uh, useful information there. I've got a compass, a GPS, a mirror, which you can use as a mirror, or use it to uh, signal aircraft or people looking for you. Um, there's another uh, little magnifier here, some toe warmers. Twine is great stuff to have. I've got a little assortment of twine. Depending on your weather conditions and, and where you are, uh, I've got some suntan lotion in here. You may want some bug spray too. Rope twine is really handy stuff. Here's some 
zip ties here and some 550 paracord. Uh, I've got some little thin nano cord here. I've got my automatic fishing reel. Uh, your plugs are lightweight and handy. Um, this is something I consider really useful. It's one of those little microfiber towels. Uh, really great to have a towel. And these things are awesome. They're little compressed towels that you can uh, pull right, right open and it'll be like a, like a piece of big tissue paper or, or a little mini towel. They're disposable, pretty handy. Uh, for my toiletries kit, there's a little bar of soap, some disposable toothbrushes, a little uh, piece of tape in there. Stuff that I consider more important that I, I really wouldn't want to be without is um, I've got a little mini axe here, a mini saw, my fixed blade knife. Here's a little folding pocket knife with a lot of tools on it, uh, a sharpener for that. Uh, you definitely want to have some light. I'm a big fan of headlamps. I wouldn't use anything but a headlamp because it keeps your, your hands free. Um, there's a couple really good brands out there. Don't get any junky ones. Uh, and then have some extra batteries with it as well. Fire is really important. It's so lightweight to carry multiple forms of fire starting. Um, don't be without it. I've got some disposable lighters in here. I use those 99% of the time, but I also have a little match case with some matches. I've got a little magnesium fire starter in there, and uh, here is some uh, fuel tablets, so you can use those to get a fire going. Uh, depending on if you need medication or not, you know, keep uh, a pill fob or something like that. Don't be without your needed medication, and uh, as well, you want to make sure that your traveling papers are done and ready ahead of time and ready to go. Um, this is part of my water uh, filter kit, which I keep in here, some water storage uh, pouches. And this is a pretty handy little thing. It's a little miniature, doesn't look very big, but it actually works great, a little miniature bivy sleeping bag. Um, as far as clothes, what I always have in there, no matter what time of year, and again, this depends on your climate, but we have some chilly summers here, even at nighttime, it can get kind of chilly. Uh, I'll keep like a little uh, wool undergarment set, uh, pants and top and hat. Here's a scarf, um, raincoat set. Always want to have a set of gloves. Um, I really like my Ventil cotton rain shirt, poncho. That's a, a neat thing to have. And then some extra underwear and socks. Um, that's pretty much everything I keep in there all the time. As far as a cook set, I've got a little titanium pot and I keep all my cook gear in there. Here's a titanium spoon and fork, a little cleaning thing, uh, some chain to hang the pot. Um, this is a really cool little rocket stove that's portable, made out of titanium, lightweight. Um, a little set like this here is kind of pricey. You can accomplish the same thing with stainless steel or aluminum is lightweight too. I just like titanium because I think it's a, a, a nicer metal, uh, more durable than aluminum, healthier to eat from. It's a lot, lot lighter than stainless steel, uh, but that's up to you what you want to carry with you. And we'll get into the food uh, a little bit, what you're going to have with you. Now that said, if all of this stuff here disappeared, if it was all in my pack and I got separated from my pack, this is something that I always make sure I have with me all the time. I'll either keep it attached to the strap that goes across the front of the pack, so I've got it right here, or if I have to set my pack down or I'm away from it, I always make sure I have this little canteen kit with me, and I can get by pretty fine on here. I've got a titanium canteen in here with a little... Uh, canteen cup so that I can cook stuff. I can boil water with this. I've got my Frontier water filter in here. I have another Sawyer water filter here. I've got ability to make fire with this um, um, fire striker here. And then there's a lighter in here and a little towel in here. There's a lot of, I have a compass in here. I have a little pocket knife in here, a uh, pen and a waterproof uh, piece of paper. So it's a little tiny kit, a little flashlight here, but I feel pretty uh, secure with this. I can do a lot, so that's a good idea. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. Um, even though this attaches to this, it's um, a good way to do things. Um, and again, you know, as far as packs go, this is a, a Maxpedition. I like that brand a lot. If I were to buy a pack, I'd probably go with one of the Maxpeditions just because they're good quality and they have a lot of pockets. But like I say, this works for me and it's um, it was cheap. Don't forget uh, maps. Uh, you know, in addition to your GPS, you'll want to be able to navigate with you. So have all that stuff figured out ahead of time. So like I said, that's everything that's in the pack all the time and it stays right around 20 pounds um, without food and water. Now what I like to do, you can never really plan for everything depending on weather, depending on where you're going, depending on uh, a lot of different variables. You may want to have a lot more stuff. You may want to have a lot of different stuff. So that's my core pack. What I like to do is keep um, just some plastic totes of different things. If I know it's 
winter time outside, I would uh, keep this tote handy, maybe even keep it in your truck so it's ready to go. And this is stuff that I can grab to supplement my pack. All that stuff isn't gonna do you any good if you end up freezing to death or dying from exposure in the desert or whatever the case might be. Um, for myself in winter time, uh, I like to have a big wool blanket. I mean, this is a huge bulky thing, but if I know that I'm gonna be out there in the cold, it's, uh, it's a pretty nice thing just to grab. It's, it's really worth its weight in gold if it keeps you from freezing. Got some uh, heavy duty uh, mitts here, a wool sweater. Um, I've got this uh, little uh, sweater right here and then some maybe wool pants uh, too or undergarments are always a great thing to have. I'm a big fan of my um, big wool poncho here. This is a pretty uh, nice, cozy, uh, warm thing to uh, have and works great around the campfire too. It doesn't get holes in it like plastic uh, clothing does. Food is a really important thing to consider. You want to have the most compact, lightest food that you can bring with you. You want to pack as much sustenance into that food, something that's very high in calories, high in fat, high in protein, and that's what you want to focus on. Um, and also, this really depends on where you're traveling. I, I recall uh, an experience I once had in the desert where I nearly died of thirst, and boy, in retrospect, if I was bugging out through the desert, I'd be carrying as much water on my back as I could, and that would be about it, because uh, water's pretty important. Well, let's say that you're traveling through areas where you can get water. It's, uh, it's not a, the biggest deal. Um, you're definitely going to want to put your emphasis on some food in that case. So what I like to do is carry the food in a separate pack. Um, this is an old little uh, pack I've got, and this is my, uh, my food bag. I stick all my food in there, and then I tie this onto my main bag. And again, if I were to get separated from the main bag, I can always keep the food separate. Or if you're camping out in the woods and you want to keep your food up in a tree so the, the bears don't uh, um, come sniffing out, that's a, a way of keeping it separate. What I did, I wanted to see what was available today in an average grocery store, just so uh, we can see what you guys can equip yourself with. So I went to our, uh, our average small town grocery store and I bought uh, a little selection of things that I would recommend keeping in your pack. They're, they're really great. So this is everything I picked up in the grocery store. Um, beef jerky is great stuff to have. I also picked up a little uh, summer sausage, but I got hungry for lunch and ended up eating it, so I don't have that here, but uh, a little uh, sausage that doesn't require refrigeration is good. Um, these pre-made food packs, I just grabbed this one, happens to be rice. There's a lot of those um, little packs out there. You don't want to bring canned food. The can actually weighs a lot more than you'd think it would, and it's kind of bulky and hard to pack too, but uh, these are great. If you're going into, again, a place like a, the desert where you need to pack your water in with you, then uh, by all means, bring food that already is hydrated. If you're going to be going into an area where you have plenty of water, then bring food with you that's dehydrated, like these little, uh, you know, split pea is very nutritious soup. And then you can use your uh, little cup, uh, titanium cup, and boil this up and make yourself some soup. Um, Corn nuts are great. There's a lot of energy in those. The Indians used to use that for uh, trips. It's uh, a great snack to have. And uh, if you can get some pemmican too, that's also good. If it's winter time, you're gonna be, wanna be more heavy on fat, so pemmican is good. If it's summertime where you just need more protein, then beef jerky is good. Um, chocolate is a great thing. It's, uh, it's a nice, uh, pleasurable thing to have when you're stressed out and hungry. Um, the only problem with chocolate uh, is that if it's summertime, it's gonna melt. I like these little chocolate baking chips. They're uh, less sugar, more cacao in them, and uh, you can just have one little chip without having to break a bar open and get in chocolate splinters all over. Some bread is uh, nice. It's kind of bulky. There's uh, a lot of weight in the moisture, but this is bread that doesn't need refrigeration. It's pretty handy stuff. And then some kind of granola bar or snack bar, you know, depending on if you like those or not, those are handy to have. Here's also some other granola, and you can buy a big can of dehydrated uh, fruits uh, as well and just put in little Ziploc bags. Probably the most important thing in regards to food is get food that you like. If you don't like it now, you're not gonna like it when you're uh, you know, really stressed out and having a hard time. Um, this is all food that I kinda like to eat anyway, so it works for me. Uh, a lot of people like peanut butter and jelly. I can't stand this stuff, so if you don't like peanut butter and jelly, uh, don't bring it. Just Bring food that you want to eat anyways, and that'll make it a lot easier on yourself. So I hope uh, that was useful for you guys. That's everything I keep in my pack, and it's always evolving. There's always new products, new interesting things coming out. So it's, uh, it's a thing in motion, and that's again why I like to have these little plastic totes where you can keep extra stuff and supplement uh, or add to your pack as you need it. One thing I wanted to point out too, um, I forgot to address this when we were talking about clothing, 
is you want to be the gray man. Wherever you are, you want to be able to, to fit in. If you're traveling through the woods, maybe it doesn't matter so much, but if you're traveling through a, a suburban uh, area or a, a, a big city, dress and act and carry yourself in a way that even though it looks like you might be bugging out, it looks like you're just another normal guy that's bugging out. Do whatever you can to not stand out and draw attention to yourself. It's been a lot of fun sharing all of this with you guys. If you enjoyed this, check out our other NFPA videos and you may want to become a part of the association. And there's a lot of great uh, exclusive member content with that. So again, it's been a pleasure and we'll see you guys soon.